I received quite a few requests from people asking me to take a look at some of these mirror dash cameras. Now I've reviewed a couple over the years, the first one being all the way back in 2012, but of course things move on, so let's look at a more recent one. Now whilst all these cameras share the same feature that they clip over your rear view mirror, there are quite a few differences between them. This one is quite standard as far as the specs go as a dash camera, but the thing that particularly appealed to me about this one is that the rear camera is one that goes outside the car on the back. That's something I haven't had in a dash camera before, so I wanted to see how well that worked. The rear camera is just 720p, the front one is 1080p. But the idea of having a camera outside the car means that you could potentially use it as a reversing camera, and it's supposed to come with additional benefits in that you get a nice, clearer, wide angle of view. You've not got any rear headrests in the way, for example. And in a car like mine that doesn't have a rear wiper, the idea of having your camera outside the car with a supposedly water resistant lens means that you can always get a good clear view, even in the rain. So if it lives up to the hype and does what it says it will do, then this could be useful to me because in a convertible car, you can't really put a camera at the back facing out of the window because it gets folded away inside the mechanism. Whereas this, the camera is permanently fixed to the back. So I thought it's worth getting, testing out, having a look at it. A little bit surprised to find inside the box, it's a mirror. Yes, this sounds silly, but I really wasn't expecting it to be like a reflective piece of glass. I was thinking it was going a lot more like a phone when it was switched off. It was just a screen that used the camera for the rear view visibility but no you can use this as a normal mirror as well as a screen now I suspect there's all different rules about mirrors in different countries I haven't even checked the UK ones I suspect you probably can't just replace a rear view mirror with a screen you probably have to have a mirror there anyway on the bottom of this we've got a button I'll show you all the features of that later on and the camera now this is on the left hand side of the device as you were looking at the mirror so this means it's more suited for a left hand drive vehicle where it would sort of point away from the center of the vehicle a little bit whereas in the UK you're kind of crossing over it's, it's awkward with the camera on the left hand side on a right hand drive vehicle but anyway on the back here you can see the inputs we've got gps for an external gps antenna the micro sd card the rear view camera plug and the usb power supply and a reset button there as well these rubber parts push against the mirror and then this clamps around the mirror i'll show you how it goes you get these rubber straps there's two different lengths of these inside the box they're quite stretchy and the idea is you hook them over either end of this around the back of your mirror and get them quite tight on there because you don't want this to move around. And of course, when you're fitting it, you've got to make sure that the camera on this can see around the mirror that the device is mounted to. The power lead is a USB mini B with a right angle plug on it. The rear camera is attached to the wire, which goes all the way up to the front. On the top of the rear camera, there's a bracket which can be tightened up. It's there so you can angle it exactly how you want. And then to that bracket, you attach this double sided piece of 3M tape, or you can screw through it and attach it up to your vehicle in a more permanent state. On the other end of this long cable from the rear camera to the front unit is the plug, which plugs into the front camera in the AV socket. To me, that suggests it's an analog video signal that's coming from the rear camera rather than a digital one, which would more commonly be delivered via either USB or an HDMI socket. Now, on the other end of this wire, at the end nearest to the camera, this red wire branches off, and that's supposed to be attached up to the reversing lights of your vehicle. The whole thing is powered by the standard USB socket. There's a dual converter here, cleaning cloth, pry tool, and cable clips. Now let's just look in the manual for a second. It's got a suggestion here as to how you put all these wires in your vehicle. You can see they're running them along the headlining from the front camera to the rear camera, and then down to that reversing light. And if you read number five here, it tells you to attach the red wire up to the positive terminal of your backup light. Oh, and also look at number two, maximum SD card size, 64 gigabytes. I'll talk more about that later on. But as far as that wire goes, well, you don't need to use it. If you want to activate the rear camera, you don't have to have it automated. You can just swipe your finger across the screen like that and use it that way. All the red wire is doing is automating that feature. Now, looking at the rest of the specs here, you can see the screen size and the resolutions and things. It mentions AVI. I was a little bit worried there because really bad, terrible old dash cameras used AVI. Well, it was wrong. It uses MOV. The file format is MOV. It's an AVC codec, so ignore the AVI part on that. 
Now, as far as dash cam features, it's a very standard camera, which is fine. That external GPS antenna would have given it GPS capabilities, but I haven't got that, so I haven't got GPS capabilities. But yeah, just plug the back camera in, plug the power in, and then choose your resolutions and how long you want each file to be, whether you want the parking mode on or off, those kind of things. Parking mode, if the car was shook while the camera was in parking mode, it would wake up and start recording for 30 seconds. It's got a battery built into it. Now, as far as the rear view camera goes, you can see where I've mounted it on the car here next to a wasp. The wasp wasn't there when I put it in. I think that came second, but you can see the wire going down to the bottom there. Obviously, I'm not putting this in permanently like that, but I would really have wondered where to put that wire if I was doing, because you'd have to sort of take off panels and things. You can see on the left hand side there, that's my proper reversing camera. So I've already got one. So there's no need for me to activate that reversing feature. Now put aside the flickering on this shot for a moment and just look at the overall idea here. You can see out of the back of the car at the moment, so I've got it angled so it works as a mirror. If you angle it a different way, so you can't see out of the back of the car, then you can see what is displayed on that screen. But you can't really show both things at once. As you can see here, it's either one or the other. You've got to pick, do you want this to work as a normal reflective mirror or do you want to see what the camera sees that's on the back of the vehicle? That would work in a car with a black headlining. This car doesn't have a black headlining, it's got a white one. So on a sunny day like this, I can't see this digital, this LCD display on here. It's on at the moment and whatever I do, I can't see it. Of course, I've got the roof open as well. I mean, not all cars that would apply to, but even when I close the roof, I can't see this at all. So I might as well open it. So in this mode with the roof open, you want to use it on the mirror mode so you make sure your mirror is angled looking out of the back window now it's not as good in a mirror as the one that's already on the car it's kind of darker because of the necessity of having the display in it but also because it weighs quite a bit and it's strapped to the front of the mirror there's a very fine vibration goes through this when you drive or there is in this particular car so it's almost impossible to use it as a normal mirror as well it's a very poor rear view mirror so I've got a digital display I can't see and a poor mirror that I can't see very well. Now, imagine I had a different car, one with a black roof lining in it. I was able to tilt it up, get a good clear display on it. Still not perfect because there's a, uh, a refresh rate on the screen. Now, you're not used to having a refresh rate on your rear view mirror. So as you're driving along and you look up, there's a kind of a lag where the vehicle's going past. There's one thing looking at real life and there's another thing looking at a, a video being played. But even if you ignore the refresh rate, then your other problem is that it goes very dark. Anytime there's sun behind your vehicle on that camera, the display goes really dark. And then I can't make out anything that's on the screen. The one benefit to this that I would say is, Imagine you had a, a van or a vehicle that had a blocked out section at the back of the cabin. So you didn't have a rear view mirror in it, you couldn't see out. Well, this, if you put this in here, put a camera on the back of the vehicle, you could then see something. So that is the one occasion where I think this would be better than nothing. But at the moment, it's worse than pretty much everything. Now, whilst they say a camera never lies, it does work considerably different to a human eye. Look out of the front of the car here through the window, nice and clear. And then if we move on to the mirror, well, I have to adjust the exposure on the camera I'm shooting this with so that we can get a nice clear image of that. So we've really blown out the background now. And if we switch to the back view, you can see that that is all in silhouette, but that is as clear as I can get it, even with the exposure blown all the way up on the camera. I wouldn't want to trust my reversing based upon what little I could see on that screen. But whilst I can manually adjust the exposure on a camera, I don't really have the same control over my eyes in that regard. If I'm looking out of a front window of a vehicle, it's nice and bright, bright sunny day like this. You look in your rear view mirror, you want it to be roughly the same brightness. So you can just glance between one and the other with no issue. If your rear view is much darker than the view out of the front of the vehicle, when you glance over to it, you'll just be looking at what really looks like a, a blank screen. But let's move away from that now and have a look at some video samples. Right, so as we go through these traffic lights, I thought it was a good opportunity to do a bit of a talk to the camera. The reason I mentioned the traffic lights is so I can find it later on when I look back at the clips because I'm currently driving across the country from the west to the east. Right, so as we go through these traffic lights, I thought it was a good opportunity to do a bit of a talk to the camera. 
So you can see from that that individual clips are stored for the front and rear and the audio that's recorded inside the vehicle is used for both clips. So if you were just to send someone a copy of the rear clip, for example, it would have the audio that's recorded inside the vehicle rather than the audio that might have been recorded by a camera stuck on the back. Of course, you can turn the microphone off as well if you wanted to do that. Now, the video quality from this dash camera isn't going to win any awards. The front one isn't all that bad, really. I've seen a lot worse. But when you come to the rear view camera, it's a bit of a step down. This one being just 720p and 25 frames a second. And then delivered to the front camera over that cable with some sort of analog process by the looks of it. It's certainly quite soft anyway. But still, it's a big step up from not having a dash camera. The one thing I always say is... People get too critical sometimes about the ins and outs of the fine details of the car coming past you at 70 miles an hour in the opposite direction, whether you could read its reg number with your headlights on, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, that's all great, but don't put people off just getting a dash camera, because having one is better than not having one. For example, if you were to stop at a traffic light and you're waiting for it to change, but the car in front of you, instead of going forward, reverses into the front of your vehicle, and then he gets out and says, you've driven into the back of my car, and there's just the two of you there, who's going to prove that? Well, if you've got a dash camera, it will do it. Irrespective of whether it's the best quality image in the world, it would show what had happened, and that's better than not having a dash camera in your vehicle. Now, with this one especially, because I've got this rear view, this is something I wouldn't normally be able to achieve with a standard dash camera, because I couldn't put anything in the back window with this being a convertible vehicle that folds away. This is always pointing out to the back of the car whether or not I've got the roof up or down on the vehicle. But if we were to look at the footage from this camera with critical eyes, I've got to say that it doesn't match up to the best that a modern dash camera can do. The front one is not bad, but it does get a little bit dark at times. But that is a lot better than the rear view, which does have a tendency to get really dark. So not only have I got that dark screen to look at on the rear view mirror, if I look up at it, quite often I'm just looking up at silhouettes of things. I definitely wouldn't want to use this as a reversing camera. And as far as a rear view mirror goes, it's not very good. And as a rear view camera goes, it's not very good either. But on top of that, this is quite a memory-hungry camera. It gets through a memory card quite quickly because we've got two cameras running at once, of course, but also it's using an MOV file format, which tends to lead to larger files in an MP4 format. So looking at the front camera, 1080p 30, 12.3 megabits a second variable, a one-minute clip, 88 megabytes. Rear camera, 720p, 25 frames a second so a different frame rate there but a one minute clip on there 54 megabytes but adding them both together 146 megabytes per minute and then the maximum size card this thing can take according to the manual is 64 gigabytes so you could fit seven and a half hours on a 64 gig card but i think you'll take a bit off that for reserve file space and things so i reckon about seven hours is the maximum you can record on this before it starts overwriting the oldest clips now, unfortunately, when I was testing this camera, I didn't have it in the vehicle at any point when it was raining, so I was never able to test out whether that rear camera would have worked well in the rain or whether it would have got raindrops stuck to it. But I managed to take it out in the dark, so let's have a look at that. Now, this is the first time I've taken the car out in the dark with this dash camera fitted to it. And I've got to say, I kind of see what they were trying to do now. The rear view in the dark looks better through this than it does through a normal mirror. So that came right at the end of testing and it was a bit of a revelation because up to that point this thing had worked worse than any rear view mirror I could imagine. But at this point it was much better. I mean, just look at this next scene. We've got a vehicle coming up behind the car. Now, in the normal rear view mirror, this is just glare in your rear view mirror. You can't really see what's going on other than there's headlights behind you. But I could even read the registration number on the camera here. And it came through that clear on the screen as well. So, yes, in the dark, this is much better than a normal rear view mirror. That said, if it's too bright for you in the dark, you can press the button at the bottom, which turns off the display and just leaves this overlay and you're using it then as a normal mirror with this overlaid information, or you can turn that off as well by pressing the button at the bottom. And then you're just using it as a normal mirror, although it is a tad darker than a normal car rear view mirror would be. 
activating the emergency button or the file lock feature on this is quite difficult when you're driving. First you've got to touch the screen, then you've got to hit the appropriate hit point at the bottom, which is a tiny little icon with a padlock on it. Trying to touch that while you're driving along is nigh on impossible. And even if you do manage to hit it, as I did on this occasion, it just locks the current file. Now I had it activate a new file every minute, and when I pressed the button, it had just started the next file. So the file I actually locked was the one after the thing I wanted to capture. As long as you're not driving though, those touch controls are quite easy to operate. There is a little bit of a lag every time you tap a button, but it's not too much. And then you can see down the left hand side of the screen, five icons for front or rear recordings, front or rear locked files or photos. And then within there, you just tap on the file that you want to play back and it plays it back, squashed down to fit on the screen. From here, of course, you can fast forward, rewind, lock files or delete files. The files on the memory card are logically laid out. We start off with three folders, lock, photo and video. And then within those folders, you get the front and rear camera folders. And within each of those, you get the files, MOV file format, each of which in the file name has the date and time and an F or an R, depending upon which camera recorded it. Oh, and I nearly forgot to mention, when you stitch two files together or play them sequentially, two files that follow each other, there's no noticeable jump or gap between them. And that goes for both the front and rear cameras. Over the years, I've tested out four dash cameras that were built into rear view mirrors, but I didn't even make a video on the third one because it was just so poor. Now, this one is a lot better than that, but as a category, I've yet to see one that works as well as a standalone dash cam. I've mentioned that the screen on this is difficult to see in the daytime due to the difference in brightness between the outside world and the display, but I also didn't mention how you have to change your focal length to focus in on the display. Of course, with a traditional mirror, you're looking out of your front window off into the distance and you're looking into your mirror off into the distance, keeping pretty much the same focal length, but you're not doing that with a display. It's like holding a phone up in front of your face. Now, there might be a few people out there thinking, well, this would be all right because my car doesn't vibrate very much. So I could clip this over my rear view mirror, tilt it so I could use it as a normal mirror. But then if you're doing that, why not just use the mirror that's in your car anyway and have a separate standalone dash camera? And consider that many modern cars have things built into the mirror, like an auto dimming feature that you wouldn't get with this. I like the idea of the external waterproof camera though, especially for vehicles that can't accommodate a normal camera in the rear window, but then again that did come with its own wiring issues. Of course the real answer to all this would be for car companies to offer dash cameras that were built into the car. My Mini already has a camera at the front that can read speed signs and a reversing camera at the back, so it's got two cameras in it already, it's just a shame that it doesn't record the footage from those. And then we wouldn't need all those aftermarket solutions with wires hanging everywhere. I mean it happened for sat nav so it's time that it happened for dash cams as well but in the meantime in my opinion these mirror cameras just aren't the way to go i'd suggest buying a standard camera that sticks to the windscreen now this is the point where people will tell me that in their country they're not allowed to stick things to their windscreen don't follow what i'm telling you to do follow the laws of your own country it's down to you to figure out what those are because i can't memorize them all but if you are in a country where you are allowed to stick things to the windscreen of your vehicle or the windshield or whatever you call it where you live then the one that I'd recommend as a dual camera is the one that I've been using in my Mini for over a year. That's the Viofo A129. I never got around to doing a video review of that. If you want me to do one, just let me know. However, if you do want to go ahead and get the same camera that I'm using at the moment, then I'll put some affiliated links to it in the video description text box. But that's it for the moment. As always, thanks for watching.